Carl travelling nicely well, hidden cycle under one of his jumping as well as he is. He's screwing a bit his old fences. He's going at him all right, but just not making a great shape. Midnight Chase has been lucky, one or two down the back. Davy Russell's happy enough, Ruby's happy enough. Andrew Lynch is definitely very happy on Fleming Star. Get the nice toe. Uh, First Lieutenant is jumping well. Paul Carberry, I'd say, wants to be going as well as he's going on the white colours on the inside. But all the play for Tony. Heading away from the stands and up towards fence number eight, hidden cyclone. Shows just ahead of Midnight Chase. Keto Della Rock in third ahead of First Lieutenant. Fleming Star on the outside. Then Sir Deschamps. And they're followed by Pandorama, China Rock and Tidal Bay. But they're tightly grouped. Passing halfway and going towards fence number nine. Hidden Cyclone, Quito Della Rock into second. On the inside is Midnight Chase, then Fleming Star. And behind the Fleming Star is first Lieutenant and then Sir Deschamps. China Rock, Pandorama last but one and finally Tidal Bay. Making the turn now, heading towards the far side of the courts where they have six fences in a line. And it's Hidden Cyclone who leads by a length to Keter Della Rock, three lengths away, Fleming Star on the outside of Midnight Chase, First Lieutenant is next, then China Rock, Sir Deschamps, and Tidal Bay and Pandorama together at the rear of the field. Coming to the first down the far side, Hidden Cyclone, the leader, followed in second place by Keter Della Rock, Fleming Star moves up on the outside, then Midnight Chase, mistake there by Sir Deschamps as they continue now with seven fences left to jump and it's Hidden Cyclone, the leader. Followed in second place by Keto Della Rock, Fleming Star close in third, Midnight Chase, then for China Rock improving. First lieutenant, then Sir Deschamps, Tidal Bay, Pandorama brings up the rear. Seven from home, Hidden Cyclone, Fleming Star into second, and third place China Rock, then Keto Della Rock, and behind these we have uh, first lieutenant, then Midnight Chase, followed by Sir Deschamps, and on the outside of him Tidal Bay. Another open ditch, six fences from home, Hidden Cyclone, Fleming Star in second, and there followed in third place, jumps closer, Fleming Star in third, China Rock, then Midnight Chase, and behind these, first lieutenant, Keter Della Rock, Sir Deschamps in pursuit with Tidal Bay, four lengths to Pandorama in rear, five out now, Hidden Cyclone, the leader from Midnight Chase and Fleming Star, China Rock is next, and behind him, as they go to the next fence, is first lieutenant, then comes... On the outside, uh, Sir Deschamps, Keter Della Rock losing ground. Tidal Bay is next, Pandorama is last. Four fences from home now. And over it, untidy jump by Midnight Chase. Fleming Star regains second behind Hidden Cyclone. They're followed by China Rock. And then First Lieutenant as they race down now towards the final open ditch. Three fences from home in the Lexus Chase, Hidden Cyclone. Fleming Star is second, first lieutenant is third, China Rock is next, behind these over to Midnight Chase, and then Sir Deschamps up to Tidal Bay, turning now to face the second last, Hidden Cyclone, the yellow and red of China Rock, Fleming Star tracks them, four first lieutenant, Sir Deschamps closing in fifth, a gap then to Tidal Bay, they're at the second last, Hidden Cyclone, China Rock, Fleming Star in a little bit close, didn't lose much ground, first lieutenant is next, Sir Deschamps ridden along, Tidal Bay trying to close as they race towards the home turn now. Fleming Star makes his move on the outside as the crowd roar. He's coming there strongly on the outside of first lieutenant. China Rock, Sir Deschamps driven behind them. Tidal Bay staying on all the time. Hidden Cyclone has dropped out as they come to the final fence. It's Fleming Star the leader. Fleming Star the leader from first lieutenant. Sir Deschamps on the outside as they come to the final fence. Fleming Star the leader in the Lexus at the last. Fleming Star is over in front. First lieutenant putting in a big challenge on the near side. Then Sir Deschamps and Tidal Bay as they race into the closing standard. First lieutenant on the near side. On the far side is Fleming Star as they race up towards the finish. First lieutenant on the near side. Fleming Star on the far side. And first lieutenant has the advantage. Tidal Bay storming through. Racing up towards the line. Tidal Bay storms through to win it. Narrowly from first lieutenant. The tight for third between Fleming Star and Sir Deschamps. Clear of China Rock. A long way back to uh, Pandorama and Keter Della Rock together. And then Hidden Cyclone with the Midnight Chase pulled up. Tidal Bay, 9-2. Ruby Walsh didn't look all that likely going to the last, but he stayed on strongly. The Hennessy runner-up to win it from First Lieutenant Fleming Star and Sir Shop. Well, what an exciting race. I thought uh, First Lieutenant had it won. I thought Fleming Star, the second last, had it won. Then Brian Cooper rise on First Lieutenant. I thought he had won. I thought it was between the two of them. And in the dying strides, uh, old Tidal Bay sticks his head up rather than down and goes between uh, Fleming Star and... Uh, there you are. There's, there, uh, betting and running, lads, if you're talking there. 
Hidden Cyclone jumps out in front. Uh, second is China Rock. Cruising on the outside is Fleming Star. Now, Fleming Star just didn't get home because he has these buried at this stage. If there was 2 6, they're home and hose. Look at him. Andrew Lynch hasn't moved on him. He cruises up there on the outside. Kita Della Rock is has dropped right out of it all together. But we have Sadir Deschamps coming here. He missed a few down the back. He doesn't come out of the race uh, too badly because he missed a few down the back. He stays really well. But first lieutenant, I thought it was home and hosed here. But Fleming Star gets under the last, lands not with the same zest as he had at all the others. And now Brian Cooper gets a rally out of uh, first lieutenant. I thought definitely going to win here. He that had a good run at the Hennessy, a winner at Cheltenham. I thought he was sure to win here. Fleming Stark, to his credit, rallies back. But just in the dying strides here, just you thought Quida Della Rock was going to come here. Ruby gets a run out of old Tidal Bay and he squeezes up between the two of them to win going away. He was the true stayer in the race. He's a winner of a Whitbread over 3 5, second in the Hennessy. Mouse thinks he's going to win. Yeah. Well, Mouse, not your fault. You had him in great order. Look to be home and host. Go on, Mouse. He's a great fella, Mouse Morris. He's excited. And he knows that... I hate to tell you what he's saying. He got a great tune out of him. You know, he's run a cracker, first lieutenant. So has... They all have run well. But just, we didn't get a clear-cut winner. But a great success. Fine day for Ruby. Started off not great. Then he's ridden three winners. Tidal Bay here. That was some race to watch. Yeah. For this old horse has been some servant. Uh, he won an Arkle Trophy, and uh, when he was with Howard Johnson, Tracy's down with uh, Paul Nichols. There he is. I certainly am. Uh, I'm still trying to recover from that. I don't know what was that like for you. My God, well, well done. I, say, I was cutting Ruby for. I was thinking you're giving him too much to do. Just yeah. get a few lengths closer because we know he flies from the back of the last. Extra two furlongs at Charlton was certain well. Oh my God, he's on absolute flying form yeah. today, is Ruby. But it, I mean, it all caught us out. He he just came from nowhere, and he's, it was very impressive. He, he was travelling really well and jumping well. Then got a little bit outpaced, and then stayed on well. Yeah. But for eleven-year-old, you know, we've turned him round. He's in the form of his life, and I promise you, he's not out of the Gold Cup. I tell you what, I don't think so. Extra after two seeing furlongs, that. he jumps now, and he's got confidence. And roll on, Cheltenham. Roll on, Cheltenham. Well done, you. Thank you. Fantastic. It must be what? an awkward old son's with a ride for him if he was finding fault in that ride. <laughs> Tidal uh, Bay. Uh, what a finish. What a finish is right. Great finish. All the lads that deserve credit here. The other horse just outstayed him really. He got a, just a, a renewed effort from the back of the last and he's gone by to give uh, that man something to shout about anyway. And our winner returns, all smiles, what a win. Great, great run at Newbury under top weight to finish second to Bobsworth and uh, finished like a train here, just like a train. Some day for the Wileys as well, they win the two grade ones, one with Willie Mullins and Michaels. There's the page, read by John Dorgan, son of Flemings Firth out of a Lamas mare, stayed all day, June's bride. Staying's the name of the game. Ted, whatever about Cheltenham, he could be a national horse, could he? 
Yeah, he could be a national horse. He's won a Whitbread, he's won here, he stays forever. He jumps and stays, he's a high-class horse. And uh, national is a different kettle of fish than when you go to the entry fences, but uh, whether they like him or not. But he stays all day, why couldn't he? I mean, Metro and Cologne, they're class horses, and the class horses have a great record in the national. He stays and he jumps and he gets himself a little bit disattached at times, but he got some rally from the back of the last. Finish well. I mean, listen, he's the winner and we give all the praise to the winner, but the second and third and fourth have run crackers as well. They put up the spectacle that we all got a shouting and roaring for. I mean, Fleming Star, everybody was behind him. Then you had First Lieutenant and you had Sadair de Champs. Without the four of them, there's only one winner, but they made a great race out of it. Watch it again there. It was an absolutely look at China Rock on the inside just giving way. Ruby's working hard there. That horse with the white nose man. Davy Russell there on so there's the champs. He sees, he knows he's gonna keep going. Andrew Lynch's horse looked like he had all these stone cold. But for me he didn't just get home. He rallied, maybe he got lonesome in front, because when uh, first lieutenant joined him, you think he was gonna pick him up well there, but he rallies a bit again when Andrew Lynch gets a couple of smacks into him, he drifts over towards the rail a bit and I just thought he didn't. He didn't quit. Maybe, maybe a bit more company might help. They got to persevere over some. Oh, oh yeah, over three. you have nothing to lose by going back to the Hennessy here again. But the other horse just finishes the better, and uh, always a great race. Hard luck for anybody to lose it. Oh, you'd have to run him back in the Hennessy again. There's no reason why. He's only got beat a snot. <laughs> There's the connections. Graham Wiley's the man on the right there. There's Graham Wiley, uh, and uh, there's Jackie. Or, uh, Georgie Brown, uh, Georgie, which is uh, Nick Pollock's wife. Go, Tracy, you have winning connections there, have you? Actually, P Peter Kayser here beside me, Ted, uh, like a flipping superstar. He's been followed by cameras all day, and you're still smiling. Yeah. I mean, he, he pulled quite hard. There was a lot going on in that race with Fleming Star, wasn't there? Yeah, he pulled too hard. That's what uh, Andrew Lynn said, he pulled too hard. And maybe he would have been better if he let him go off the front. Do you think it was just too far for him today? Well, no, we don't think so. No, you don't think so? We don't think so now. So coming there to the last, he was full of running in the Marby. So you think if you let him bowl, bowl yeah. along, that might have worked out better for him? I think so. Okay. That's what we're thinking. Now, when I spoke to you earlier on, you were saying he got very wound up coming into the track with the flags and all that sort of thing. Do you think he might have boiled over? Yeah, he, he boiled over a little bit, but he was very wound up with them flags up along there. and. Uh, the cameras, you see, and we looked, we had the job putting the saddle on and moving the box. And the minute he got up on him, he said he was very well done. Yeah. You know, mad for going. Maybe took too much out of him. Not settled. The main thing is the horse okay? Not a bother. Yeah. Not so what was Andrew's, his verdict at the end of having a chat with him after he got off? Well, we either done, we, as he says, maybe we done the wrong thing, <laughs> pulling him back, not letting him go on. Maybe better off he went on. That's what he's thinking. He says, we're, gonna, we're thinking of going for the Hennessy, he says. No trouble. What do you think? Well, I suppose we'd have to do what the jockey says. Well, you lifted this place today, Peter, with that horse, and if you come back and do it again, it would be wonderful. Isn't it, isn't it great? Look at all the crowd of people. That's a me or the horse, or that's a you and me. Which? It's a you and me. The horse! <laughs> You're brilliant. <laughs> Just don't swear. Oh, wow. We could stay with that. Great loser, Peter. Well done, Tracy. Here's the man whose day it is, though, Ruby. I mean, what a race. We, uh, you just came from nowhere and nailed him. Yeah, I, I, not happy, but I was pleased that I was struggling crossing the road because I knew we were going to go gallop then, and uh, he was always going to really, really stay, and he jumped a second last well, got a bit tight off the bend, but managed to get through the gap, and, you know, I thought going to the last, Jesus, I have a chance, but he landed a bit flat-footed, and for a few strides I wasn't sure, but then he started to pick up, and when he picked up, he flew, and... Uh, it was great. Did you really think you could pick them up, though? I mean, it was extraordinary, the, the ground you made up from the last. I, I did. Look, Leperstown's a hell of a long running, and it's a very stiff track. It doesn't look it from this side, but if you go to the far side and look over, there's a huge difference in the height of the ground here and on the back straight. It's a very stiff finish. I mean, he started the run, in fairness to him, he, he ran, and uh, Fleming Star wandered over, and I was thinking for a stride, Jesus, where am I going to go now? But there was enough of a gap between them, so I, I aimed for there, and he went there, and once he got in, he was going to win. What sort of pace was it through the race? It was a good gallop. Um, yeah, look, it's a great one. It's a, it's a Lexus chase. I mean, it, it was what it should be. It was a true run race and flag fall, and the best horse is going to win. It's like the King George the other day. People said that the, the Felton was a quicker time. It was, but it wasn't as true a race. The King George was the true race, and I bet you today you'll find the Lexus was the true race. And that's what grade one horses do, and you have to step up to the plate, and to win at this level, at grade one level at three miles, you have to stay. No, he was a winner of an Arkell as a novice. Obviously, the Gold Cup beckons. He's that type of a horse, is he not? 
I'd love to ride him in the world hurdle. <laughs> in the world hurdle, yep. I would. We've no big bucks. I'd love to ride him in that. He could do anything. What about the national too? He'd have too much weight. Great day there, Ruby. Yeah, brilliant day. Well done. Cheers.